issue. Has the state crossed the line by providing a guidance inferring that churches must not worship God in song and in chant? Now, being that I'm a California attorney for nearly 25 years, and also that I serve as senior pastor of my local church, I'm often asked right now by pastors, volunteers, and churchgoers as to my legal perspective on the topic, a topic that has created a clear chilling effect amongst people of faith. Many are asking, is the state of California saying that I can't sing or chant to God in worship in church? Can I sing to Jesus this Sunday morning in my house of worship? Let me first say that this public service announcement, this PSA, in no way is providing any medical advice on the topic. COVID-19 is certainly very real and is something that social distancing is not to be taken lightly. However, it's important for you to know that when providing the guidance discussed, the state of California did not provide any scientific data showing that singing in church will spread COVID-19. Not one shred of scientific evidence in the 14 pages of the guidance mantra, and in particular in an atmosphere where social distancing measures are already taking place. So you need to dig a little deeper on what you're being fed by others on this topic especially if it's the media telling you to stop singing in church. Seek competent medical and legal advice on this issue for your particular situation. Further, be kind and gentle with others who may disagree with you on this topic. It's a sensitive issue on both sides of the aisle, and the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So seek first to understand and go the extra mile by extending a hand of grace and peace to others. Now, let's jump straight into the legal topic at hand. The question being whether or not the state of California is legally telling you that you can't sing worship or chant to God in church. On July 1, 2020, the state of California, through the Occupational Safety and Health Division of the state of California, more commonly referred to as OSHA, issued an industry guidance measure for places of worship and providers of religious services and cultural ceremonies. That's what it's called. The new guidance states in part, places of worship must therefore discontinue singing and chanting activities. The first question is, is this a guidance or is it a law? In other words, will I get busted if I sing in church? The short answer to the argument, as of today, most legal scholars agree. The worship police won't handcuff you and take you away. In other words, no, you won't get busted for singing in church. Now, why is that? Well, it's very simple. There is no such thing in law as a prescribed order by osmosis. You either have a law denoted in codes, codicils, statutes, legislations, or case law, which can easily be pointed to for citizens and non-citizens to follow, or you have nothing, the contrary of which would be vague and ambiguous, thereby creating the fanciful whim of anyone attempting to impute criminal action against a citizen or non-citizen without clearly pointing to a law. Further, the fact that it says guidance or recommended or consideration sufficiently creates the ability to present a cognitive defense and argument providing credence to the statement above. In short, most legal scholars contend that a guideline is a guideline is a guideline, not a law. Now, in discussing this matter with my longtime law school friend and colleague, Attorney Michael Peffer Esquire of the Pacific Justice Institute, PGI, being a law group protecting religious liberties, Attorney Peffer forwarded a document to me from the PGI dated July 3rd, 2020, and entitled OSHA Prohibition on Singing and Chanting, or The Day the Music Died. The letter emphatically states, amongst other things, and I quote, as a matter of law, the OSHA guidance is not a regulation. In other words, it's not a law with civil fines or criminal penalties. The letter goes on to read, the OSHA guidance is just that, guidance. 
Now, if you would like a copy of this letter, which was sent to me from the Pacific Justice Institute, it actually goes into a great discussion on the OSHA guidance measure, and I believe it will be very helpful to you. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, then go to my Facebook page and send me a private message with your email address so I can get a copy of the PGI letter in your hands. Now, I don't have time in this PSA to address the issue that the State Department of OSHA deals with the workplace, employers, and employees, not necessarily the oversight of the general public. So OSHA's jurisdiction on the matter is limited. This legal letter from PGI will be very helpful to you to read. It addresses the jurisdiction issue and may just knock the whole topic out of the ballpark for you. So make sure you get a hold of me for a copy. Number two, the second argument remains that worshiping God in song and chant is a fundamental constitutionally protected right to wit a mandatory state guideline infringing on this religious liberty may give rise to the argument that a violation of the First Amendment exists and that such mandated guideline as must not sing in worship creates an indelible infringement on the free exercise of religion clause. For example, in Sauce v. Bauer, a recent 2018 legal case, the United States Supreme Court declared, and I quote, there can be no doubt that the First Amendment protects the right to pray. Prayer unquestionably constitutes the exercise of religion, end quote. So then, worshiping God in song and in my experience with monastic life and Benedictine chants has prayer, adoration, and communion with God in worship as the focal point. One can easily conclude that worshiping God in song and chanting, which is a form of prayer, is protected under the free exercise of religion clause and in accord with the Sosa versus Bauer case mentioned above. In fact, even today, July 8, 2020, the case of religious liberties was once again affirmed by the United States Supreme Court in the landmark case of Little Sisters of the Poor, Saints Peter and Paul Holm versus Pennsylvania. In this case, the Supreme Court held today in favor of the Sisters of the Poor. Justice Clarence Thomas, presenting the majority opinion stated in part, for over 150 years, the Little Sisters have engaged in faithful service and sacrifice, motivated by a religious calling to surrender all for the sake of their brother. Justice Thomas continued, but for the past seven years, they, like many other religious objectors, have participated in the litigation and rulemakings leading up to today's decision, having to fight for the ability to continue in their noble work without violating their sincerely held religious belief. So friends, the trumpet call for religious liberties is loud and well, as we see in the case of Little Sisters of the Poor. Even in a different matter, the case of Faith Fellowship versus the city of San Leandro, a settlement for $2.3 million was entered in favor of the church, Faith Fellowship, stemming from an ordinance dispute. The moral of the story is this. Do not fear about your right to worship God in song. In fact, do me a favor. Write these scriptures down. Isaiah 41 verse 10 and also read the entire psalm, Psalm 91. And go ahead and read it directly after I conclude. Here's the real question. If we don't speak up, will our right to gather and our right to pray inevitably be taken away? Can there be a time in which the actual name of Jesus may not vocally be repeated? Will there come a time in which all forms of worship of God must be done in silent observation if we don't speak up? Perhaps the John Lennon lyrics in the song Imagine, and I quote, Imagine there is no heaven, and no religion too. Maybe this is something not to be taken lightly. Well, maybe it's time for you to stand for your religious liberties before they're slowly and unconsciously stripped away. That's something to think about.
I'm California Attorney Louis Scott Brennis Esquire, and this has been a public service announcement.